Okay, uh, in this segment, what we will discuss is uh, we will remove this generality in a way. Uh, till now, we were talking about any function of ut. Uh, now we will get into uh, sinusoidal variations. Okay, and because uh, that is important because anything can be broken into sinusoids. If you know how a system behaves for sinusoidal um, uh, velocities, so you will know or you can figure out uh, how it will behave for any general function. You just have to do the Fourier transform. Okay. Now, so that means uh, suppose we now have our pressure uh, is some. A over R e raised to j omega t minus k r. Remember I was talking about that earlier we were using C t minus r, we were not talking anything about omegas and k's because that was general. Now we are talking about the sinusoidal variation, so we have brought in omegas and k's. And A here is uh, real. Because we are starting from this point, you can take it as real. And this is telling you that it, so, so, so assume that this is the field which is existing in the uh, environment, when there is a small source which is pulsating. Okay. Now, from the equation, this, okay. Now, now everything is sinusoidal, pressure is sinusoidal, velocities are sinusoidal, everything. So that means your time differentiation is like multiplication with g omega anywhere. So, so as soon as you get into harmonics, this is a, a tool, mathematical tool which you can use that any differentiation is multiplication by g omega, any integration is a division by g omega. So that you can directly use. Okay, so that will bring you to this equation. That means rho naught j omega. That's the differentiation of u. Um, okay, this u is u r. Anyways, is negative of gradient of pressure in the r direction. So now just uh, do the uh, uh, differentiation with respect to r and you will get something uh, like this. So, your u r will come out to be negative of 1 by j omega rho naught. Um, yeah, so same thing. Uh, um, do p over j omega rho naught. 1 over r plus jk. So, this is the expression which you will get. Okay. So, your radial velocity at any r will be related to the pressure at that point like this. So, this is the pressure at that location this is the radial velocity at that location and they are related like this as a function of r and frequency k. Okay. Okay. And if you um, want to see actually you know the, the displacement which we are talking about the um, you can again do this u over j omega and you will get an expression like you know uh, p over omega square rho naught and times 1 over r plus j k. So, this is the displacement at any location as a function of r. When I say any location means uh, only r is the varying thing. Okay. So, um, so, this is the displacement, this is the pressure. and this is the velocity. Okay. Hmm. Okay. 
Now, always, you know, uh, we were talking in terms of impedances by define how we were defining impedance at a location pressure over the velocity okay now if you do that you will get uh, say the impedance to be p over u which will come out to be um, i'm mm, skipping the steps you will get something like this kr over 1 plus k square r square okay. I mean just algebra of putting this and this there and that normal process of rationalization uh, okay so you will get it so I will just write it so that j omega rho naught over 1 over r plus j k because the time dependence is same in both so they will just mm, cancel out from numerator and denominator and you will get this so I should have written this first and that so whatever okay mm. in fact one better way to write this is always um, um, you can think of you know z over rho naught c so here it's like in a way normalized with respect to the rho c of whatever the medium is and rho c was the uh, um, acoustic impedance for the plane wave now for spherical wave it's different and for plane wave it was just this number nothing was there that is why it is generally uh, used uh, as a normalizing factor for this specific acoustic impedance in any other types of waves so as compared to plane wave impedance what is the value okay so this you can write as uh, k square r square over 1 plus k square r square plus j um, k r over 1 plus k square r square I will just split it just to show that uh, so this is the resistive term and this is the reactive term of the impedance ok. So you can call them as specific acoustic resistance, specific acoustic reactance and earlier it was only resistive part there was no reactive part earlier when I say it was for plane wave and this is for the spherical wave so you, you are able to see the difference that in spherical waves uh, what, what, what does it tell you it means when there is a um, impedance which is not completely real in terms of phase because when there is only a real part that means that the pressure and the velocity they are in phase but now there is some uh, some phase between them which depends on these values and these values depend on both the frequency which you are talking about and the radius or the position which you are concerned with ok that means uh, the pressure and the velocity whether they are in phase they are out of phase they are um, completely opposite of phase whatever it is it will depend on both those things the frequency and the distance at which you are uh, uh, looking at in fact you can uh, if you write this um, as some omega e raised to j uh, theta so then that omega will come out to be um, k r over 1 plus k square r square and this tangent of this theta will be 1 over kr ok this over this is that hmm. now you look at this um, now if if tan theta is kr um, so the uh, 
Um, fine. Now, now think in terms of a, a, a product KR. This product of K times R is called Helmholtz number. Okay. Uh, it's like a dimensional, dimensionless parameter which talks about smallness, largeness sort of things. Okay. And uh, just now imagine, okay, if this is tan theta, uh, the value of cos theta will become exactly uh, I think this, yeah, you just evaluate. So, k r over 1 plus k square r square, okay. Now, what does that mean? That means um, your mod of uh, z uh, is nothing but rho naught c naught uh, c I am writing anyways times cos of theta. Okay, so I mean its magnitude is this, so times rho c, and this magnitude has or happens to be cos theta. Okay, but then what this equation tells you physically, that's more important. Now suppose kr is small, okay, uh, then from equation what, what uh, do you conclude? That means this value is very large, that means this is so small, cos theta is small that means this full thing is small that means p over or p is equal to u times z you can write right p is equal to u times this and which is small but then i can say that to create a pressure you will require very high velocity right so so from here, if I write that P is equal to say P mod is Z mod times U mod. Um, now this is having a cos theta component and cos theta becomes small when KR becomes small. That means this terms becomes small when kr becomes small then to create the same pressure amplitude you will have to have very large velocities okay now what do you mean by kr being small because up to this point this is just mathematics to tell that th this but then what exactly do you mean when you say kr is small kr contains two things right the kr is 2 pi over lambda omega over c or 2 pi over lambda means in, in, in 2 pi how much of a wavelength is there. That means this is r over lambda. That means your r how big or small is compared to the wavelength. Now when you are saying small, kr is small, either you are saying that um, means k r is r over lambda. Now you can say that this is small or this is big, anything makes this small, right? So now the, the in English if you want to say this, that if you have a small source, because r will be small if you have a small source, if you are just going close and close to the surface. And at that, at, at that location also this is valid, right? Because this, these things which we have written, they are valid for any point in space, but they will also be valid at the surface. Now, if this is small, 
uh, as compared to lambda whenever i am saying this small that means now as compared to lambda then to create that you have to have a lot of uh, velocities so which is not possible also means how, how big velocity you can impart okay so that is why it's not possible to create large intensity sound with very small speakers another way of looking at it is you think about lambda mm, suppose your lambda is very big that means very high a uh, low frequency sounds okay suppose say 10 hertz sound now for 10 hertz uh, any r is a small r you know uh, because at it 100 hertz 3.2 meters is the lambda so 10 hertz 32 meters is the lambda now third as compared to 32 meters any speaker is small sort of thing so that means you will have low intensity production uh, production so you have to have big sized speakers to produce at least some perceivable sounds for low frequency that is why woofers subwoofers are bigger in size as compared to the tweeters okay and that is happening because of this cos theta factor here okay now what's happening you know is and then see um, it's it's very uh, weird you th you just think that there is huge velocity near the surface huh still you have very less amount of pressure which is getting created uh, at a location uh, for certain frequencies because uh, it's like um, it's oscillating but the power is coming back in the next cycle of the or next half of the cycle it's like the reactive power if you remember the active power and the reactive power in in some lengths of kr the reactive power is more so you are actually not um, um, able to send across the power you are giving it taking it back the source means whatever is driving this you know that sphere it must be some uh, source electrical source or whatever now that in one half it is giving the energy in the other half it is taking it back that is why the net transfer of energy is small okay but for the frequencies for which uh, this is almost like um, one so you will have more amount of energy to be transferred so 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 that means kr should be bigger not small for good transfer of energy okay sir i think there is a root missing is it yeah 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 thanks sir omega where omega there also a missing in this yeah these places those things are there or not there no, 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 not there right <laughs> yeah hmm. got it any queries questions so so the point is anywhere in if you are thinking in terms of frequency domain it could be optics it could be acoustics it could be electrical circuits this is important to talk about small big large far near anything I mean, there is no point of saying near near means with what frequency because if you are talking about 10 hertz 15 meter is near very near to the source that means achha, one point um if you go very far away you know if kr is very very large uh, just see this what happens here kr is very very large that means very far away so what will happen uh, this will become it should become one right 
so when it is become it is becoming one so it is behaving just like a plane wave which is intuitive right because if you are far away from the sphere all the spherical surfaces also will look like planes so so it's the same thing so that means far away it is like they are in phase again okay but near field they are not in in phase so that's why uh, if uh, if you measure the sound pressure level and intensities which we will discuss now in the next segment uh, you remember uh, as we increased the distance by double the 6 db reduction used to happen okay now this will not happen in this case if you are in the near field because this thing is causing a trouble okay so that was happening because at that time you know for the plane wave it was just this thing and it was getting reduced uh, means the energy was getting reduced only because of this so uh, as i was saying now if you are trying to measure and see whether um, uh, this thing is happening if i am doubling the distance is the sound pressure level coming by 6 db down and if you are within this near zone you will not be able to observe that so either this can be used to figure out whether you are in near field or far field or if you are doing the, this without knowing that you are in the near field then you should understand that why you are not getting this doubling doubling and 6 db okay so always in terms of um, the product KR. Okay, we'll stop here for this segment and see you in the next segment with. Uh, we'll talk about the intensities. <laughs>